Hi there, welcome back to Ravenous Babel. My name is Dan, and we're back with another Market Babel update. Today we're going to talk about the usual staples in the market, outsiders, and a general overview of how things are faring with it. And then we're going to get into something a little spicy. We're going to talk about some pink strip commons and rares that you may be missing out on in Welcome to Wraith. First up, we've got Feyendahl Spring Tunic. We've got three printings we're going to focus on as usual, since the other ones aren't really too relevant to this conversation. We've got the White Bordered History Pack 1, Crucible of War non-foil, and the Rainbow Foil from Welcome to Wraith. Start off with the cheapest, we'll look at the History Pack 1. It's gone for about 118 at the moment, but there's not many in stock and it quickly goes up to about 140. So if you're looking for a, a cheap tunic, that 218 might be your best bet right now. The Krunik is going to be your next cheapest option, around about the same price after that cheap HP1 tunic gets bought up. This one's going to be around $245. Uh, this will be Welcome to Wraith tunic. This one's been going up the most because it's a foil and they're not going to be re reprinting it as a foil. So this one you're looking mostly at like $310 with one being $300. The next one we're going to talk about is, of course, Crown of Providence, the other generic staple equipment. It looks like it's hanging around 215, roundabout. Uh, you can catch a sale here and there for less, it looks like. Someone nabbed one here for 200, 200 again, 202. So you can definitely find them cheaper, you just got to keep your eyes peeled. The cold foil, which actually, ironically, has a higher stock right now, is slowly retracing back, uh, but it's still closer to 300. So. If you're looking for the cold foil, expect to spend around $290. Next up is Command & Conquer, one of the big three generic staples. We're going to look at two copies for the most part today since this third copy here, this fabled version, isn't really too relevant to the conversation again. Uh, let's look at the HP1, looking like $80, $84 roundabout, pretty standard run-of-the-mill price. I would expect the Arcane Rising one to be about $88, we're looking at like $90, $92 might be back in the hundred dollar territory depending on how many sell in the near future and just to throw it out there just to look at the fabled command and conquer yeah this might be the natural price of it now yeah they're selling it looks like a natural increase it doesn't look like a buyout so it's just scarcity of a cold foil fabled card from dynasty which i don't know if many people are buying at this point with outsiders being released if you really want to get a place out of these it's going to cost you about twice what it would have a month ago there aren't going to be many more of these hitting the market anytime soon so you know take that for what you will moving on to enlightened strike we're looking at hp1 and welcome to wraith of course hp1 low 30s pretty standard run of the mill around 35 not up or down really welcome to wraith about 38 same deal so not really too much movement there let's move on to art of war kind of the same deal looking at hp1 and Arcane Rising, about $44, $45 for HP1. This first one here is kind of a, a fake out because the shipping is $5. The Arcane Rising one, you'd be looking to spend more like $49 to $51, $52. These cards in particular, they could see a temporary increase in price, and that's because skirmish season is literally about to start, and at the end of the month, Pro Tour Baltimore is going to happen. So players who need to get the staple cards for these events are going to be looking to get them soon. If you want to make a move on these prices, this isn't financial advice, but I would say it's a pretty decent time to get into some of these if these are cards you need. Alternatively, you could wait until after Pro Tour Baltimore. That might be another good time to buy. So either, you know, within the next week or so, or first two weeks or so in May would be decent times to buy, I think. But again, not financial advice. All right, let's 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 look at some Fableds. So if you've been keeping an eye on these, some of them have been going pretty crazy. Arknight Shard at $500 is nutty. It's only played in Viscerai. And as a Viscerai main, not played in Viscerai that often. Uh, it's viable, probably about as viable as Plague Hive. They're both playables. They're both restrictive. Um, 500 is a lot. I'm just going to say that now. If you really want one, I mean, you know, what, what's the price matter? But if you want to collect these, if you're just looking to nab one, I feel like you can probably find one cheaper on eBay or on the marketplace. You know, find someone who wants to get rid of it, wheel and deal. 
figure it out. <laughs> but I think you could probably get this for less than 500. I think 350 is where this thing should be. But there have been some pretty heavy buys on Fabled's in recent months. Hard to find all around about, you know, 430. It's a playable. It's good in Old Time, good in Icelander, is what it is. Same thing with Ivafidia. Some people might be trying to run it into Azalea now. Kano players run it, it's a staple in that deck, so I wouldn't expect both of these to move much at all. If you want to pick one of them up, this might be the cheapest price you see for a little while, but you know, keep your eyes peeled, go on eBay, go on the marketplace, see what you can find if you are trying to get in on these cards. Blood Rakai went back up to around $70. Um, this is about where I bought mine at, actually, uh, but they went down to almost $30, I think. Uh, there was a small buyout on them, but this card's gonna retrace. Maybe like 45 is the new low, 50, something like that. But this card doesn't really have any functionality right now. Um, maybe once we revisit Draconic cards, we'll see more cards that cost one or more. And, and maybe this will be more relevant, but I don't see that being a thing right now. So if you're just looking to get a Fabled card, uh, if you're looking to finish your collection of them, don't buy this in 70. I, I don't recommend that. I would wait until it retraces because it will happen. Corsham, I think, went up a little bit. I believe this was hovering around like $90 fairly recently. I think there was a small panic buyout when Gore Belching got announced. People thought that you could combo Gore Belching with Corsham. That wasn't the case at all. Maybe that's what that's from. I don't know. This could be some PV speculation. This could be natural. Uh, but Corsham is up from around about 90 a month or two ago uh, to 134 ish. There was a small buyout on Great Library of Solana recently. That might be in preparation for Dust Till Dawn. It seems like solid reasoning. This one was also around 90, I believe, kind of the same as Corsham, and now it's 185. It was actually in the 200s uh, a few days ago. Granger's getting up there a little bit. I believe this got bought out to about 350-ish. Uh, it's retraced pretty quickly back down to 210. Maybe it was 250 I'm thinking of. Again, this does have some playability, similar to Arknight Shard and Plague Hive. Is it a card you can use in Guardian? Sure. Uh, do Guardians use it that often? Not really. I'm a big fan of it, personally, but yeah, this one will probably retrace more. Keep an eye out if you're looking to pick one up. All right, let's talk about Outsiders. So let's get on the first page here. We're looking high to low. So our Marvel cards, we have our Codex of Frailty, close to $400, because there's a lot of hype around Codex of Frailty right now, and these cards are very rare. Codex of Blood Rod around 225, and Codex of Inertia around 253. Plague Hive around 170, 171, not too bad. It's been pretty steady at that price, if I'm being honest. A lot of these prices have kind of stabilized. The Extended Arts, I don't know. I still think they have room to drop. Red Backshroud's not dropping as fast as Trench. Could be a waifu factor, maybe. The other legendaries have been dropping for the most part. These prices look like what they've been fairly consistently for the past week or so. It's like Nats being the most expensive. These three being roughly $40, give or take. They've been fluctuating, but uh, Red Back Shroud's still a little bit more than the other two. Quaver, it's 25 bucks. I, I expected this from this card, to be honest. I can definitely see it going to 20, um, following like a coordinate peak or a ghostly touch path. Maybe you can pick them up for 15 if you're lucky, but I wouldn't expect that for at least a few weeks, probably. It's going to be a slow trickle from here because these are already pretty low and people are going to be unwilling to get rid of them for less than this. You know, the, the race to the bottom has kind of ended. Now it's a matter of just finding good deals, really. Looking at some Majestics. So we're going to talk about two. You know what they are. Codex of Frailty and Premeditate. So, there's been a lot of discussion with these two cards. A lot of people think Codex of Frailty should be banned. I think that's, uh, it's a, it's a little early to say. But as with most TCGs, a new set's gonna come out, a card's gonna be good, and people are gonna get upset, get all up in arms, grab their pitchforks, and say it's gotta get banned. Give it two weeks, give it three weeks, give it till Baltimore. If the card is still absolutely busted by then and Azalea cannot be stopped, then I feel like a discussion is warranted. But right now, I think everybody needs to calm down. It's a good card. There's plenty of good cards out there. And we're okay with those. Premeditate. Now, Premeditate is different for me, I think. 
Premeditate, it's like it's like Plunder Run, but it's, you know, more fair, more balanced. Uh, there's not a whole cycle of it. There's not a whole rainbow cycle. It's just its own card. Um, does that mean it's okay to stick around? I'm not sure. There's a lot of buff cards that Azalea can use right now. They're all pretty decent. But the thing is, is Premeditate can be used by everyone else as well. You know, it's not like Codex of Frailty. It's not locked to Assassin. It's not locked to Ranger. It's generic. So, of the two, if I... If I had to put money on like which one could get banned potentially, I would say premeditate out of the two. But I don't know that I expect either of them, honestly, to get hit. So Yeah. But they are expensive. So Codex of Frailty around $38. I know I bought my playset for 40 each. Ouch. Premeditate around 33. This one's been dropping a bit more than Codex, but they're both kinda hanging around this price for the most part. Uh, the drop is very, very slow. With skirmish coming up. Pro Tour coming up, I don't really expect these to drop much more. Premeditate might see 30, Codex might see 35, but with these events happening, I don't expect them to drop below that until after. Give and Take's been going up in price. I know it went down to about $3 if you were lucky enough to pick some up then. Awesome. Good for you. It's a good card. Melting Point's been around 7 uh, Codex of Blood Rot, around 9 Shakedown's been going up, actually. It's around 11 now. It was hanging out around 7 on release, and just slowly but surely, every few days, ticking up a bit. Concealed Blade, kind of the same deal. Um, not as much, but it is ticking up. We got your traps here. The traps have been pretty solid, around 4 bucks. Same for Codex of Inertia. We're getting into that, like, 2 to $4 range on some of these cards, and in that range, some of these are... Very underpriced, if you ask me. Um, Spreading Plague's really good. Infiltrate's good. Down and Dirty's good. Down and Dirty might be a good spec, I'm just saying. With Light Illusion is coming back, you know, it's a popper that you can play from Arsenal. That's interesting. I think Burdens of the Pass is the sleeper card in the set, if I'm being totally honest. I think that the 10 defense reaction requirement for the one effect is a bit much, but it's a blue block three that makes it so defense reactions can't be played if they have the same name as a card in the graveyard so this might be a way to win out some matches against heavier more defensive decks you know time will tell but i think this one's a dollar it's damaged <laughs> okay so it's mostly like 250 i think at 250 this card's worth getting into just pick up your playset now get it out of the way don't let it be like this round's on me and you know by the time you need a playset they're 18 dollars each some of us have had to walk down that path, and it wasn't fun. All right, let's see what we got on page three here. All right, so nothing super noteworthy on this page, so I think we're about done looking at the overview of Outsiders. Now I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about the daggers in Outsiders, specifically the cold foil daggers. These have proven to be pretty rare. Now looking at Nerve Scalpel, which is proving to be the main, most in-demand dagger for Azuri. You're looking at 60 bucks for 006. There aren't any for uh, 005. I think that's the only one that's out of stock. Scale Peeler, looking at about 50, roundabout. Let's look at the other one. Eh, you can pick one up for 43 right now. Uh, that's not too bad. Quickly moving back to 50, roundabout. So it seems like the standard price for these is about $50. Orbito Clast. Again, there was a deal there for 45, then you're flipping moving back to 50. This one though, 41, 43 roundabout, 45, and then you know eventually back to 50. But this orbital class, if you are trying to get one for Missouri, then it could be a decent deal. These daggers I think are gonna be highly collectible as time passes. Considering that they're short printed because there's two of each finding these specific ones to get a full playset of six and then you know tack on the two cold foil spider spites the one promo and the one from dynasty actually haven't looked at the spider spite prices let's check those real quick impromptu all right what we got here what we got we got dynasty and we got a promo here so a promo around about 21 bucks and then quickly jumps to like 27 so if you're looking to get one of those there's a couple that are available and cold foil for the one from the set we're looking at about 27 28 
Let's scoop one up for about 25, 26 if you really want to. So you know, there's that in case you're looking into getting the daggers. I actually just got my full set of eight. The OCD in me is killing me because the last one I got, I believe it was Scale Peeler. I got this one in last and it is a Japanese printing when all of my other ones are Beltram. So OCD's in high gear, it's bothering the hell out of me. I gotta swap it with someone. So if you have a Belgian print, they're more glossy. Japanese are more matte. If you have a Belgian print scale peeler, cold foil that is pointing in that direction, and you want to swap it out for a Japanese print, let me know. Let's talk about Quiver of Rustling Leaves. This is another quiver that just came out for Rangers, mostly for Lexi. The other two Rangers both have named quivers. So it's mostly a Lexi thing. Uh, the art on this is gorgeous, and I really want one. Just going to be forward about that. This thing's been $40 to $41 since it came out been very steady at that price. I don't expect it to move anytime soon. I should probably get mine because I was hoping it would drop, but it hasn't. Um, it's 15 in stock. Around about, it's, it's been around the same stock too, so we'll see. But Mark Poole is going to be in Baltimore, and I'm really big on getting cards signed, so I need to get one of these bad boys in cold foil before the end of April. Silver Wind Shuriken. This card. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe when you're watching this, I'm going to look like an idiot. But this is a bad card. I mean, it's it's a blue. You got that. It's a zero, so you can you can discard it to Katsu's ability. But that's about it. This card doesn't have go again. It doesn't block. The only way I can see this card being decent is if you play out a combo line with Katsu and your opponent like saves their whole hand to block like the Dishonor or something. And you say... <laughs> Gotti! Gotti! <laughs> Don't have a dishonor. I'm gonna play a silver one sure you can pass. You know, it's good in that situation, I guess. <laughs> um, but my crazy theory there were there was talk of transcendence being a future set name, right? If you're following that theory, if not at all, uh, you should look that up. It looks like there's a card in every set that has an italicized and capitalized word in flavor text in a card that isn't like the beginning of a sentence or the name of a person or a place and that has proven to be a set name in the near future so the one we have currently that we're theorizing is transcendence dynasty dust till dawn they were both they both follow that pattern so maybe transcendence maybe we go to mysteria maybe we get katsu star of the show right my crazy theory is that he starts the game with some ninja items in play from your deck, kind of like Dash. Um, it's it's the representation of a ninja coming into combat with a bunch of gear, ready to go, some ammunition. <laughs> that's, that's my theory. Uh, a lot of people were thinking there was more to this because it was printed as a cold foil. If you look at it in the greater view of things, if you step back a little bit, you'll see that a lot of items and auras, permanents in general, will get a cold foil treatment because they stay out of play. They, you know, LSS probably wants them to look really good. This just kind of falls under that umbrella. Now, why are we talking about this card if it's not good? Um, it was trending down from 15 to 14 to 13, and my plan was to buy a bunch of them, you know, just to have, just in case. Uh, someone did it before me. <laughs> and I'm not saying I was going to buy it out. I wanted three copies have in cold foil at a nice cheap price and they were down to like 13 you know it was getting there and then this happened on the 30th yeah i don't know what happened <laughs> i don't know if he bought them out if the person bought them out because it went up to like the price it's at now or if they just needed one extra or if that was someone else it may have been someone else panic buying because they really wanted one but yeah someone bought them out someone's specking on them kind of missed my window for that <laughs> hopefully they retrace I don't see why they would stay where they are unless people keep the pressure on this particular item. So, yeah. Silverwind Shuriken, guys. Uh, stonks, I don't know. Let's talk about Plague Hive. <laughs> talk about Cold Foil Plague Hive. This is the one card I've been chasing after recently, and I am 0-4 on trading for it. I don't have any one particular card that's like super high-end that I'm trying to trade for. I'm trying to trade like Command & Conquer, some Art of Wars, Black Tech Whispers, Crown Dominion, like some L's and some staples of equal value at the very least. And then, you know, throw in some other cold foils, if whatever you want to make the deal work. I uh, just want a cold foil one, really bad. 
I collect fabled cards, one of each. I really like Assassin. I'm gonna start playing Azuri a lot. And Mark Poole's gonna be in Baltimore, and I wanna get a Cold Foil one signed. So, yeah. But it's been pretty steady at 340, so at least for now, for the time being, 340 is probably the price. I don't see this going down anymore anytime soon. It might go up if the universe hates me, <laughs> but 340 is the price you're looking at if you want to get a cold foil plague hive right now. All right, so we're going to get into the last section of this market babble. We're going to talk about pink strip cards from Welcome to Wraith Alpha. Yeah, you're seeing that right. That's $80 for a snatch, a rare with a pink strip. Now, has it sold for that? No. It has sold for around $50. So at the very least, you're looking at $50 for this card. But considering how rare they're becoming on the market, you might be looking at $80. If you're a collector and pink strip cards interest you, I know I'm a big fan of pink strip cards. I have a little collection of them going because I think they're really cool. And I like to swag out as much as I can. Now, I don't have the money to swing foil pink strips, but I like them in general. So um, this is just a, a little disclaimer. If you want a pink strip card, if you're looking for anything specific, you might want to get it sooner than later. Sink Below is actually dropping a little bit. This was at 30 for a hot minute. Um, now some people are trying to get rid of some a little bit cheaper. This one for 19 is actually pretty cheap, all things considered. Sigil Solace is another one. It's around about 10 bucks. Can't see it staying there forever. Pummel is one I missed out on. I think they were around seven or eight bucks when I was looking to pick up a playset, and then they jumped to 20, and I was like, ah, <laughs> that's, that's a bit much for me. There's two at 20, then they go to 25 immediately, so I don't know, I might pull the trigger. Nimbleism is another one that almost got away from me. I picked two up at about $3, and when I went to go get the last one for my playset, they went up to 10. But luckily I have a buddy who has a ton of WTR Alpha. He was cool enough to hook me up with my last pink nimbleism, so there's that. Now if we're going to call out one for being cheap, maybe cheaper than it should be, especially right now considering the Azalea meta, unmovable. It's not too bad at 5 bucks, if you ask me. It's a big D-React that falls in and out of favor. Right now I would definitely say it's in favor and pink strip cards don't retrace as well as some other cards that are kind of just in meta cards that fall out of favor. So if you are interested in getting some pink strip unmovables, I think now is a really good time to make a move on those. But yeah, that's it for now. What do you think? What do you think of the market? Things are looking pretty steady in general. I know there's a lot of price increases recently, but things look like they're more or less stabilizing. Are you looking for anything in particular right now? And trying to hunt down some rare cards, trying to collect some pink strips, just buy Codex of Frailties or Premeditates for about $40 each? Tell me how you feel about that. Are you worried that the cards might get banned? How would you feel if they got banned? Because I know I'd be a little unhappy <laughs> if I, uh, Dropped 120 bucks on my playset of Codex of Frailties, and it got banned, especially before Baltimore. If they don't get banned by Baltimore, and they don't get banned at all, awesome. Um, but if they get banned before Baltimore, that's 120 bucks I could have used at Baltimore. So let's hope that doesn't happen. I'm sure they'll still maintain some value if, for some reason, the ban hammer comes for them, because I'm sure they would be legal in Blitz or some other format that's still kind of relevant. But they'll still tank. So buy those with caution right now, you know, just in case. But who knows, we could be looking at the next Art of War E-Strike kind of thing, and those cards could just maintain that price tag just indefinitely. All I know is right now, with Skirmish coming up, Pro Tour coming up, if you are playing those cards or you intend on playing those cards, I would just get them. I don't think they're going to drop much lower from where they are now, unless they get hit with a ban. So if you need them for competitive play, get them while they're in stock. <laughs> just in case. No FOMO, just just some advice. All right, so anyway, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay safe, keep playing great games. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Shout out to the Ravenous Babble patrons who keep the channel going. If you would like to support the channel, head over to patreon.com backslash ravenousbabble and see which tier is best suited for you.